Hello, I'm Fantastic and Fantastic, and today I'm going to be talking about the 10 Magic Stone Super Egg Machine Godfest that has just gone live in North America. So, this Super Godfest features a little bit of extra zest compared to a vanilla Super Godfest. And to clarify, a vanilla Super Godfest will have, at the very least, 33% chance to roll any Godfest exclusive, or 1 in 3. We have to remember that this is the baseline. This is the worst it ever can be for 10 Magic Stones. So we need to look at every subsequent Super Godfest and see, does it improve upon that? And if it does improve upon that, in what aspects or metrics is it doing so? For this current Super Godfest, it does feature the debut of a new 7-star Godfest exclusive, along with the inclusion of the... Pemdra and the Remdra, five pulls and three pulls. So basically the idea is you have a chance to pull a three pull or a five pull special extra Remdra, which we've been enjoying from like those monthly like special Godfest free rolls where you have a chance of getting a three, a five, or maybe a 10. The 10 is not included here. So there is a small chance you can get some extra rolls, which is obviously wonderful. So I'm gonna lump those two things into like the good category, kind of like what Godfest exclusives are along with the Samurai three weapons. So. We have this extra zest from the Rem Draws, Pem Draws, whatever, along with a new Godfest exclusive. And if we take a look at the rolling rates individually, oops, we will see that, well, the Pem Draw, Rem Draw is 1.5%. And I counted every single one of the Godfest exclusive and making nays just as 1.5. And basically, if you include the Pem Draws, you include the Samurai 3s, you have a 37.5% chance of acquiring any good card or basically not a pantheon i should say so is this good is this bad well it's better than average but at the same time is it really that magical because if we look at the new godfest exclusive i am not particularly impressed with her at all because she does not bring much to the table i feel in the sense that water i feel is the most disadvantaged color in the game mostly because world of carnage one slash sure realm one is probably going to be the most lucrative dungeon to play for the foreseeable future it's not it's not the most outrageously difficult there's many different teams that could at least tackle it but water is the most disadvantaged because the minoas at the end have minimum 50 percent of their health pool as wood and these things take multiple turns to kill, and if you're water versus wood, well, you just lost 50% of your damage output. It's a major drawback. And in addition to that, they are a 7x6 leader. Now, 7x6 has become quite... Is, is more punished compared to 6x5 because the bigger board should, in theory, make it easier to utilize them. So Gung Ho has given ways to kind of counteract that. So we have in AA4, we have No Hime, which is a horrible variety of different things. At least in Sure Realm, it's more doable. It's just 99 turns of dark, sticky, blind Skyfalls. It's not every single orb, it's just some of the orbs. It is problematic, it is a hindrance, but it is at least manageable. But when you combine the fact that you are water, which is the most disadvantaged color, with 7x6, which is disadvantaged as well, you're going to be having an uphill battle in my opinion. Furthermore, their leader skill only applies to healers and attackers. And that is frustrating in itself as well because, well, there's not as many healer or attackers. You may not have necessarily the box to support it. And I feel like from based on what I could find online for ver various pairings, the blue girl from the upcoming collab, which Montu, I can't pronounce its name, but basically she is going to be a viable pairing. Dina is also another possible pairing because she actually only cares about attacker cards. So, like, it is possible and, like... There are ways to make it work, but at the same time, because it's an asymmetrical pairing, you don't actually need to own one yourself. You could technically just piggyback off a friend. So I feel like the fact that she's blue, 7x6, you don't even need to own her to benefit from her, makes it so there's less motivation to roll in the Super Godfist. Because that upcoming collab that I hinted to, there is going to be only one card that can be Monster Exchange. Everything else, the seven stars, aside from the Orb Skin one, have to be rolled. And that's gonna be frustrating because it's gonna take many rolls to get those useful and valuable seven star cards. So rolling there might be what you have to do, and that's just gonna require lots of Magic Stones. Remember, Super Godfist will return on a continuous and regular basis. And while this is slightly better compared to the baseline or average or worst possible Super Godfest you can have, it still could be better. Player's Choice Godfest was like 42, 43, 44% Godfest exclusive rate, way higher. I got so many Godfest exclusives there personally. So I feel like it's not the best Godfest to roll in. Of course, if you're a newer player and have absolutely nothing to play with, it's gonna be helpful to roll in Super Godfest more compared to collabs, usually because 
the cards that spit out here are a bit more generically useful. Collabs oftentimes are more highly specialized, so to speak. So for the average player, I feel like this is definitely a skippable Godfest, and I'm not particularly impressed or amazed with this new Godfest exclusive. With that being said, let me know what you think about this event in the comments below. Do you think this is actually a worthwhile event to roll in? And if you did manage to acquire this new Godfest exclusive, let me know how she performs or functions because I'm not going to have her for the foreseeable future. I do have a Dina. Maybe I could see if I have any attackers in my box to put together a team and try. But either way, hopefully all a fantastic day. I wish you all the best luck in your own pad adventures and happy puzzling.